University and um, that's a much way that I do organize with the Hadia Coalition, which is a organization, which is a coalition of over 20 organizations at Michigan State, you know, registered to the organization that are collaborating to you know work for Palestinian liberation and predominantly divestment at Michigan State University. Um, I want to start with a little bit of a personal story and letting you all know why I firstly got involved. Um, so last semester, when you know the genocide started happening in October, I was talking to my family who is from Lebanon. I have a lot of my family there who are from southern Lebanon specifically. <coughs> we had just rebuilt our home this past year after it was bombed in 2006 by um, Israeli occupation. And I was on the phone with my grandfather, and he was telling us about how he could hear the current bombs going on while he was tending to the olive trees. He heard the bombs in the south, in southern Lebanon and Palestine while he was tending to his olive trees, and I was pleading with him to go back to Beirut and get away from, you know, the potential <laughs> violence. But he told me that he would not leave until he absolutely had to because those were his trees, that was his land. And that was his home. And so to me, that is truly the epitome of resistance. And we see this word resistance talked about in such violent ways in the media, but it's not a violent thing. Resistance is this idea that you will continue to live in the face of violence and in the face of threats. And so that story really emboldened me to continue to get involved, A, for Palestinian but also for my own family, my own ancestors, and similar to you, because I had family that lived in Haifa and Palestine before the Nakba, who were killed in this place. And if you ask my grandma, she'll tell you she still has you know, the key to their home. I had family in southern Lebanon, which was occupied for 25 years by you know, the Zionist entity that was attacked by family was murdered. And so me speaking out and being active, um, is in parts, I want to, I guess selfish is not the best word, but it's for them and for my own vested interest as well, because I can recognize that my liberation and my own freedom does not come without liberation from Palestine. And this is a common sentiment when we're looking at a lot of student organizing, because it is something that is interfaith, it's something that's across racial, religious, ethnic, um, gender, socioeconomic lines, among others, where we recognize that we have a vested interest in this, because what is going on is completely unjust, and we cannot sit and watch it happen. But because we cannot be free unless everyone is free, we cannot witness justice or peace unless injustice everywhere is abolished. So we have organizations that work um, for climate justice and similar to what you were talking about. We have organizations for Muslim um, students. We have uh, organizations of, against gun violence. Um, and I remember when things were first happening on campus, we would be at my house, literally an area probably as big as this curve right here filled of <coughs> at least 30 people at a time who just sit there for hours talking about everything that we were witnessing and um, about the ways that we are complacent in those systems as Americans. And um, it was a hard conversation. These are always hard conversations, especially when you are out of when you're Muslim, when you're, when you're witnessing your family, your community being attacked. You have to reconcile this feeling of I need to do more because just in being in this country and paying my taxes, I'm contributing to the murder that I'm witnessing and I'm, you know, creeping, right? So hours at a time, we would sit and talk about that and try to plan our next moves because Michigan State University actually invests millions of dollars in weapons manufacturers, despite the uh, violence we experienced you know, on our own campus in February. Um, you know, of course, trigger warning, but in February, we did have a school shooting, and we sadly lost three lives of our fellow Spartans. Um, and there was a feeling across the MSU community that not enough was done. And um, there was a lot of anti gun violence organizations, such as March for Our Lives, that showed up in those spaces and continued to show up in these spaces. 
um, and continue to advocate for divestment because we are investing in the exact violence that we have witnessed on our campus and that have killed our own friends and family members here. And just because it's happening abroad, just because it's happening to you know brown bodies does not mean those lives are worth less than the ones that um, we lost here. So in terms of divestment, that has been kind of one of the biggest movements on campus spaces just across the country. And again, with MSU, they invest millions in weapons manufacturers, but also hundreds of thousands in the state of Israel itself. Uh, over $200,000 is invested in Israeli bonds sent as aid to Israel, but we don't truly know what that aid looks like. And oftentimes it is tied to military aid, whether or not that is you know, direct or explicit. So we have been having a lot of meetings with the administration, with the former president, Lisa Woodruff, with board of trustees members, and now with the new president, uh, Kevin Deskowitz. But none of those have really been taken at face value, right? We experience similar things with how politicians talk and people, you know, say things because that is what you want to hear or try to talk in these circular ways without actually saying anything that's of value or of matters or can even give you hope that things will be better and change. Um, and so from those conversations, we have formed four different main goals with our organizing. One is for divestment, of course, following the numbers that I mentioned before. A second is for education, because there is no ongoing program in collaboration with Palestinian institutes. We do not have any sort of Middle Eastern studies program, which is, as an Arab American in Michigan, very, very disheartening because we come from a state with the highest population of Arabs outside the Middle East. And MSU does not have the infrastructure to provide accurate education on the Middle East in general, nor about the ongoing genocide, which has led to so much polarization on campus, which leads to a third demand, which is support. Students do not feel supported. There's various reporting processes where you can um, try to report the discrimination that you've experienced, but those, again, are very, very certain. I've gone through those multiple times. You know, I was a member of the ASMSU, which is the undergraduate student government at MSU. And I had to step down from my position because of the harassment I was experiencing from a lot of our Zionist community members because of the polarization on campus and the lack of education about everything that's been going on. I attempted to report these things, and administrators were in the room watching me and other members of my community that attacked. We presented bills that called for support for Palestinian Arab and Muslim students as well as other allied students. And for those bills, we were called terror supporters and we were called terror sympathizers, which is not just you know racist and Islamic, Islamophobic pejoratives. These are accusations. And I don't think there's enough understanding of that. These are accusations that can put people at risk on a federal level. We have international students that organize alongside with us that have been followed to their courts. We have had presidents in various organizations at MSU that have had their lives threatened and sent letters to their courts. And our university does not take that seriously. We don't really see any kind of statement from MSU empathizing with the hardship that we are experiencing. Because the truth is, if a letter were to be released every single time, uh, a Palestinian experience violence or Palestinians attacked or Nibna and Sophia Yemen were attacked. We would be getting these emails every single day. And it's something that's normalized and we are pushing against that normalization. So a divestment education and support, again, that pushes against the normalization and it also establishes our fourth demand, which is safety. We need to make sure our students are safe. And by doing so, we attack the root of the issue. The root of the issue is freedom. The root of the issue is justice and liberation and this issue of inequity that we're seeing all across America, right? And for MSU, we push DEI supposedly. We have these alleged um, strategic plans where we want to see what's best for our you know, diverse students. We want to make sure we're an accessible university. But across the board, we're seeing that that's not really the case, even beyond 
football speed even beyond these past six months. Students are let down time and time again because our administration gets too caught up in, you know, their personal beef with one another and they're fighting between board members, between presidents, um, and between, you know, again, various parts of the administration and, and, and it lets students fall in the cracks. It is so easy for students, faculty and staff to fall in the cracks. We feel like this university is one big place that doesn't really care for what we want. Um, and so yesterday was the final board of trustees meeting for this past year where they said they are not going to divest under any circumstances. On the one hand, they said that they are reviewing their divestments. On the other hand, they said they would not divest. So again, we're, we're being told that these things are not possible and being given the runaround without true transparency or without any real reason behind it. There is no, there is no mutual understanding of what's going on. It's just to, at the end of the day, the way that I perceive it, it is just to save face. And we have to plan accordingly because it is something that affects all of us and it speaks to the fundamental corrupt structure of the university. And I know that this is something um, many students have experienced in U of M where they have it much worse, where students are arrested for protesting, when students are experiencing instances of police brutality. For us, the police haven't necessarily attacked us, but they don't take our reports seriously. You know, I can only speak to my experience, but I know many other students have experienced this um, suppression where we're filing police reports, filing um, complaints, and those things just get they get forgotten or the processes are extremely dragged out. Um, with me, for example, I was at an ASMSU meeting and a member of Hillel, what you mentioned earlier, which is this hub for Jewish students that is not technically associated with MSU because they are not contracted with the university, but still work in collaboration with um, MSU organizations and use MSU facilities, right? So that's an outside entity coming in to Michigan State University and attending our student government meetings where we're being called to our supporters and to our sympathizers. I was personally targeted by a staff member there who self-described himself as a former fighter and commander in the IDF. He told me that he was going to wait for me outside after I told him to delete the images that he was taking of pro palestinian people. And after that, I filed a police report and nothing came of that. The administrators in the room didn't really do or say anything about it, and that has been a common trend. And I say all this not to center myself in the narrative or anything like that, but to just speak to the level of the apathy that we're treated with. Um, and so with our organizing, we have to expand outside of them to recognize there are various stakeholders. There's the undergraduate students, the graduate students who have all passed bills for divestment. There's the faculty, which are mobilizing more and more every single day because, again, our liberation is joint. But we also have our East Lansing community members who are as much as stakeholders as anyone else. This, this university is a key you know, point of tax for um, the, the city of East Lansing, and we're all invested in it. Um, there's Lansing community members, all of these stakeholders. There's alumni as well. You know, we have um, people who give grants to the university, and we all have a say in where this goes. But beyond that, we have international partners because MSU likes to tell itself as this land grant university and this worldwide university. Um, and it speaks to MSU's history in apartheid South Africa, where Michigan State University was actually the first to completely divest from any companies with um, shareholders in the apartheid state. Yeah, so it went beyond divestment from any sort of government or military. They actually got Coca-Cola off campus because they were invested in apartheid South Africa. Mm -hmm. And yet, MSU, and MSU invests in Israel, MSU invests in weapons manufacturers. We had Nelson Mandela here, who has an honorary law degree from Michigan State University. Desmond Tutu came here and was our commencement speaker. So we do just we do this justice to all of these infamous liberators, to all of these 
individuals that we once worked in solidarity with and still attempt to work in solidarity with with our partnerships in South Africa. But we do disjustice to them every single time our board of trustees says we will not divest. Every single time a student feels like the issues they're experiencing don't matter in this great scheme of you know the MSU empire. And it's something we collectively have to work for. Um, because we can, we can do better, and there is precedence to do better. After MSU divested from apartheid South Africa, the South, it was the, um, I believe it was the South Africa Liberation Committee um, worked alongside other legislators to get East Lansing to divest and to get statewide policies against apartheid South Africa. It is this domino effect when one community steps up and one university has, has the confidence and the bravery to stand in the face of injustice and untruth and say we will not continue anymore, there's a domino effect for others follow suit. That's exactly what we saw with apartheid South Africa and it took 10 years. It took over 10 years to get there. You know, this is not a short process. This is something that is intentional every single day and is something that is an act of resistance every single time we sign up to speak at the Board of Trustees, every single time we tell students um, about this history of divestment, every single time that we engage in conversations with one another and get each other invested because it's our joint liberation. It's an entire community of people inside and outside of Michigan State East Lansing and Lansing that are bearing witness to the same violence, that are experiencing this violence and need to be there for one another because we see humanity in each other and because our interests lie with one another from the jump. Um, I think that's all I have for you all. But.